this was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. But the giant moves, he's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow this head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reach my hand into this bush and I touch air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. You're listening to The Confessionals. I am your host, Tony Merkel. Thank you for being here. If you've had an encounter or story you'd like to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionalspodcast at gmail.com. That's theconfessionalspodcast at gmail.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the connection section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me. Just get a hold of me. Now let's get into the Art Bell iTunes five-star ratings and reviews. This is for people who are fans of the show, enjoy the content, and want to leave a five-star rating and review on iTunes. And this week's shout-outs is Raldo GTM, Cesarado, Dutton N, Nerby Flurv, Lil Conspiracy, Bastat Fan, Kevin787, Lex H7, Three Sorrels, Kyle Crew, PB4OU, Techno Lizzo, Grateful Dad 1121, E Reinhardt 314, Denver 316, Reggie 72, Velvet Fox, and JPD 6261. Thank you very much for going to iTunes, leaving those reviews. I really do appreciate it. Now, moving on to the Patreon shout outs, this is for people who go to patreon.com forward slash the confessionals and signing up to become patrons to help support the show. And this week's shout outs is Pam B and Joe Ellen B. Thank you very much for going to patreon.com forward slash the confessionals and signing up to become a patron. Now let's get into this week's show. This week we have Rusty coming on and Rusty shares a lot of different experiences. He first contacted me about a UFO experience he had, but then he went into detail about an exorcism that he saw and also some hauntings that he had in a house that he lived in and also the UFO experiences. So let's get to Rusty right now. In March of 2000, my mom purchased this house. We, you know, we moved in right away and, you know, excited about the new house. And, you know, we, we go through a few months in the house. And, you know, throughout the months, we're hearing footsteps and the creaking. And we're just playing it off as, you know, the house, the house move, you know, the new move, you know, something, you know, we're not used to, you know. And then, uh, Within about six months, we got woken up about two in the morning, and we heard this little girl crying. Well, of course, that that woke us up, you know, because at the time we we were caring for for my niece at the time. So when we heard this, we both opened our doors, you know, and go check, you know, down the hall into the living room, and we saw this little girl playing on the floor, you know? So right away, we, we think it's our, our little niece that's there. So my, my mom instantly turns to the bed, you know, to go check if, you know, my niece is in the bed. And she's sound asleep, you know? We come back out and that little girl is gone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, tonight I have a great guest coming on. I have Rusty, and Rusty emailed me initially about a UFO experience, but it turns out the guy's got a little bit more to share. We're going to get to the UFO experience last. We're going to start running through some of his experiences, uh, chronological order, uh, but we're going to start with a story of when he was at a youth convention, and he thinks he might have seen an exorcism. Rusty, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself, Tony? Dude, I'm doing great, man. What can I ask for? I mean, I get to sit here and hear you share some stories of your own personal experiences. I mean, I really couldn't ask for much more, brother. So, uh, you know, I, I just hinted to, hinted at the audience about uh, your experience with this exorcism. Uh, you know, I actually have a similar experience that I'll share with you after you share yours. So uh, go ahead and walk us into the experience. You know, wh- what was going on? You were at a youth convention. What was going on there, man? Yes, sir. Uh, well, this I would date it back to about 2006, 2007 era. And, uh, you know, we down here in South Texas, we, uh, a lot of our churches, we, we do youth rallies and youth conventions for, for the, the young, you know, and I got into a, a praise group, which we would sign language, uh, you know, your, your Christian songs, your, your hymns, all that stuff, you know, and, so, you know, we, we were really active into church conventions and stuff. So we, we went out to this convention in, in San Antonio, Texas. And while we were there, you know, the week was going by pretty good. Then I would say probably the last two days of it, you know, we we started noticing this, this young girl, you know, probably about, like I told you, about a buck ten. 15 you know what she weighed and she uh she started screaming like a screech and you know it, it started raising ears to everybody you know especially the elders so you know we, we all just started you know forming a, a prayer circle around her while this was going on you know just everybody just started coming into the prayer of tongues and you know of course, it it's, it takes you into another realm, you know, and you you know you you go into this prayer and you're going to tongues, and of course you you know exactly what you're praying about, and it, it's going, it's going, it's going, and we're we're watching this girl, and it's taking, she's like throwing her body, but it's taking six men, you know, adult men to hold her you know, from hurting herself and hurting others, of course. And, and this process, she, you know, she's rallying and screaming and doing the, the whole nine yards. So, you know, the tongue, everybody's praying. And within a matter of about 10 to 15 minutes, her body lets loose. And these curtains from the church that, you know, Pretty much, it like blocks the sunlight, but it goes from the the second floor down to the first floor that you walk through, you know, to into the the auditorium, the church itself. Um, well, it blows outward, and you know those things are give your guess about a hundred pounds, two hundred pounds, easy. So they fly outward as this girl lets loose, and in that moment, everything went silent, and within five ten seconds then all the emotions are coming out of this young girl. And of course, everybody else that was praying because it, it felt like we were in a, a battle, you know? And it, it, it was one of those eye-opening things that you could see what prayer can do, you know? Especially with somebody that's battling through something eternally that we have no idea what's going on. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, when those curtains moved like that, do you think that that was almost like, do you think it was symbolic that it was over? Or do you think that that was almost like a physical reaction to like demonic entities leaving? I, to tell you the truth, I feel like it was more of a, like I'm fleeing because of the power of Christ, you know, like, like that demonic entity, whatever entity was possessing that young girl at that moment. I think it was it was that process where, you know, she she was scared. Well, not scared. The entity itself was scared, you know, and it fleets, you know. It, it's like the way 
the the power of prayer, you know, you ask in Jesus' name, you know, a lot of entities will flee, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I get it, man. I, I, I always wonder if, at what point do we start viewing uh, the the spiritual realm on a physical level? You know what I mean? Because like these are spirits that you know supposedly can go through walls and enter your body, but at the same time you see the physical reaction of like the curtains. Um, yeah. Now, you said this was a girl, right? Yes, sir. It, what kind of strength was she displaying here? I mean, th- like people talk about, you know, people that are demonically possessed show ungod, like, sh- like, like they're they're sh- they're showing like, you know, an enormous amount of strength, like a, a very, you know, unusual amount of strength coming out of their body. Uh, was she displaying similar things? Yeah, I've, I've like I like I mentioned, uh, it took six adult men at the time. You know, I've. Myself, I I was about six foot tall at that time, about two eighty, you know. And these men were, you know, about the same range, about three hundred pounds, you know, a couple of them. But you know, it's, it took six of them to pretty much hold her down, you know. And you know, for a girl that's one hundred and ten pounds, you know, <laughs> that's just saying a lot of strength, you know. And I've I've come from a firefighter background, so you know, I know what adrenaline strength is and this is pretty much like beyond that point you know what i mean yeah you know it, it's it is a very odd thing you know and it's one of those things where it's a very common theme throughout these experiences that people have uh how how long was this ordeal that was going on i mean did you see that that this was happening for a long period of time or was it relatively quick well at, at the moment like I I really don't know what was going on before the process of the screaming and the screeching, you know, but, but once the, the screaming, you know, you know, when, when you're in a, a youth service or, a, you know, a youth rally kind of deal, it gets pretty loud towards the ending of the, the deal because everybody's praying, you know, they're, they're bringing people to Christ, you know, and then, you know, it, so it's, it's pretty loud, but, her screams were talking that, you know, and like I said, it got to a point where it raised everybody's ears. You know, it, it, it was one of those, the neck, the hair on the back of your neck just raised, you know, and it just felt different. You know, it wasn't like a, so when that process happened, like I said, it was about a 15 minute ordeal after, you know, and then that, that's when the, the curtain, you know, flung open you know you know i had a similar experience happen to to me actually at a youth convention uh but before i share that you you mentioned about i think you said it was like six men uh was there anybody else involved here at any point in time was there like any kids wandering over trying to pray for this situation just standing back and watching like i said pretty much the whole convention at that moment like i believe we have Give or guess about 200, you know, teenagers, kids, you know, young adults. You know, that, there's quite a few of us. Like I said, max about 200. And, and you know, everybody turns and start praying. You know, like, like I said, the, the, the church itself, it went from prayer to tongue, you know, within a matter of minutes, you know, and... When they went to that tongues moment, like I said, it became a whole nother, like a realm, you know, like everybody, it was like an outer body experience kind of deal, you know, because yeah. it, 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 you know, when, when you get to get filled with the Holy Ghost, it, it throws you into a whole nother realm, you know, you're, you feel like you're living an outer body experience, you know, you feel yourself laughing and, you know, joking and all crazy stuff, you know, and, you know, a lot of people don't get to experience that part you know so they will never really understand in a way yeah no i i get it uh i i asked that because when i was a young man i was probably in my early 20s i was a youth leader i think i was i definitely was in bible college at the time and uh i took the kids to a youth convention and there was a similar situation that happened it was a young lady uh down uh, at the stage she's on her on the floor she's sobbing 
and there's people praying for her and all of a sudden she starts convulsing and she starts uh like yelling and this like deep growl coming out of her body and it was just like it was really crazy. I didn't see the beginning of how it started, but uh, a lot. It was like when the youth convention was over, like the the service was over, people were leaving, and this started happening. And the kids in my youth group, they started walking over and start trying to put hands on this girl who's like throwing full grown men around. And I started pulling them off by like the collar. I was like, "No, nah, you got to back up. You got to back up because these are kids that are just exploring their faith in Christ and Jesus. And like, yeah. like you don't know what you're pl- you, you don't know what you're getting into. And the last yeah. thing you want to do is pick a fight with with that you can't you you can't win with when it comes to that stuff. Uh, and like I like because when I tell people because I I don't have much experience with uh, casting out demons and things like that. I'm not. I'm not opposed to it. I just don't have any experience with it. But what I do tell people is if you're going to be doing this kind of thing, that when you're telling this demonic entity to leave the person, you know, and you're praying about it, like, and you're saying, get out in the name of Jesus, like, I would highly recommend that people also say, and go where Jesus tells you to go. Take it out of your hands. Don't just go, like, because here's the thing, like, the demonic entity didn't ask for permission to enter that person's body. It just happened, right? And right. so if you're casting out a demonic entity without giving an instruction where to go, who's to say it's not going to go to the person next to you or the house next door or into the, the neighbor's pet? Like, you know what I mean? Like, we see this yeah. stuff in the Bible, like, like demonic entities uh, asking Christ Jesus to go into a herd of pigs, right? And so like, yeah. clearly they possess animals, but they did go where Jesus allowed them to go. And that's why I always tell people, uh, when you're casting out a demonic entity, you should definitely instruct it to go where Jesus tells you to go. That way it takes you, it takes it out of your hands. You don't have to worry. Like it's out of your control. You're just doing your part. You know what I mean? And you're, yeah. not, making your, you're not making your role any bigger than what it has to be. It's not about you. It, 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 it's, you're just, you're just basically a vessel. You're a tool to get the process done. So, uh, that's kind of like what I tell people. And that's kind of like what I experienced with that girl and stuff. It's just funny that you said that because we were both at youth conventions as both a young teenage girl and uh, there there was full grown men being pushed around by this girl on, and she was on the floor. Like she was just like sitting on the floor and like she's just like convulsing and these men are like, what the heck? I'm like, yo, I don't know, bro. You figure that out. I'm going to take my youth group, youth group kids and we're out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I was like, we're not playing this game today. We're going to go to Arby's, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh- like, like I said, when, when that happened, it, it, you know, it raised a lot of eyebrows, you know, especially to the to the younger generation that was still exploring their their faith. You know, uh, I'm not sure, you know, how many of them are still still very active, you know, with with the church and stuff like that. But like I said, it, it was one of those that it it with me it made my faith go skyrocket after that because I I really couldn't I couldn't uh you know still wrap my head around it but I knew it was something with the power of God, you know. So I that's why I had to leave it because there's no other way for me to you know, any other way for me to wrap my head around it, you know. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, man, you may not know where those kids are in life and stuff, but I'll tell you one thing, they do remember that situation. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh yeah. That. And if anything, that could possibly down the road be a testament to their faith. So, uh, you know, it, things work like that. So it's just, it's an interesting thing. But uh, so that was, you know, a very interesting experience that you had. Uh, now, you've had other experiences that are along the lines of paranormal activity. And it kind of started when you were a preteen uh, moving into a house. And for lack of better terms, it was haunted. So kind of walk us into what happened there. All right. Um, well, I would date this back to 2000 because my, my mother purchased the house in in March of 2000. And, we're, you know, we're from a very small town, deep South Texas. So when we, uh, my mom purchased this house, we, you know, we moved in right away and, you know, excited about the new house and, you know, just shotgunning our, our bedrooms, you know, like, oh, this one's mine and that one's yours, you know. Everybody excited. You know, we, we go through a few months in the house. And, you know, throughout the months, we're hearing, you know, the normal, the footsteps and the creaking. And 
we're just playing it off as, you know, the house, the house move, you know, the new move, you know, something, you know, we're not used to, you know, and then, uh, within about six months, we, we started, no, uh, we got woken up about two in the morning and we heard this little girl crying or like crying or playing, you know, something that, that motion, you know, it was, it was definitely a, a tod- like a toddler voice, like the sounding. And, uh, well, of course that, that woke us up, you know, because at the time we, we were caring for, for my niece at the time and she was a toddler and she was there in my, in my mom's bedroom. So when we heard this, we both opened our doors, you know, and go check, you know, down the hall into the living room. And we saw this little girl playing on the floor, you know? So right away we, we think it's our, our little niece that's there. So my, my mom instantly turns to the bed, you know, to go check if, you know, my niece is in the bed and she's sound asleep. You know, we come back out and that little girl is gone. So it, it just freaked us out after that, you know, we're like, well, what was that? You know, and, you know, we blew it off, you know, we tried not to talk too much about it, but it'll still come up every so often, you know, like, you know, my, my mom would bring it up or I'll bring it up. And it was like one of those things that just stayed in our, our head for, for a few months after that, you know, and, uh, it, it's a crazy experience to happen, you know, at that moment, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so this girl that you, that you saw, I mean, it, did it look like a ghost or did it look like it was just like, you know, somebody sitting there like a real person? It, it didn't have like a, an aroma around it or anything, you know, it just, it, um, uh, it's just more in a, I guess like a freak, like a freak thing, you know, like when you walk out and you see something that you're not supposed to see or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, it's not supposed to be there, but, it's their kind of thing. And it, that's pretty much how, how it felt. It was like, we got to see the, the full outline. We didn't get to see any facial features because her body, like if she was sitting in the inside on the living room, her back was facing towards us and she was facing towards the, the wall and the television, you know, like, like if she was playing on the floor with toys or something, you know? So we never got to see a facial, a facial or anything like that. But you know, you could definitely see an outline of a little girl sitting on the floor. You know, you know, it, I often, I often feel like when somebody sees a ghost, I don't think that you're catching the ghost off guard. You know what I mean? Like I don't think yeah. that you're walking into a room and they're like, "Oh snap, you're home! Crap, you weren't supposed <laughs> to see me here." You know what I mean? Like, I, I think. Yeah. That, I think it's either intellectually intelligent to the point where it does it on purpose, or maybe it is like that idea of the uh, residual energy where it just kind of fades in and out. And it's like, you know, whether you're there or not, uh, it happens, you know, but I, 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 I don't think people sneak up on ghosts, you know, <laughs> and catch them. Uh, I've seen way too many ghost shows to, to prove my, uh, my point just fine. And that's, I'm going to stand by that. <laughs> yeah. It- it, it's pretty much the same way when when that when that occurred. This is whenever um, that television show Ghost Adventures was just beginning, you know. So my mind is going crazy at this moment. So I'm watching Ghost Adventures and I'm like trying to like judge my house off of what I'm seeing, you know. And like like I said, you know, we'll hear the the footsteps and the floor creaking and things like that, but. You know, we never put two and two together. We always just, yeah, you know, like just blow it off. And we're we're from a, I wouldn't say a deep Hispanic family, but you know, like my grandma was one of those that, nah, it's the boogeyman, <laughs> you know, and you know, just scary, you know. So you could yeah. go to bed and you know just forget about it, you know. So it it was one of those things, you know. So we always just blew it off. And never paid attention to like too much noises like that. Like when we saw this little girl, it, it like 
like I said, just blew our minds, you know, and after that, we, we just called our house hunted. <laughs> no, I get it, man. I absolutely get it. Uh, it's, it's a common thing, man. It's a common thing. People see this crap in their house and, uh, it's gotta be, you know, on some level disconcerting. I guess it all depends on how you view this stuff. Uh, you know, for me, if I found out my, there's a ghost in my house, I'd have a problem with it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, Oh, let's, let's leave with some cookies tonight. See what happens. You know, like I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, let's, let's, let's take care of this problem head on, you know? But, um, oh. so that's not the only time that something happened in your house. I mean, as you became a teenager in high school, something else happened in your bedroom, right? Oh yeah. This time around, I would say 2003, um, I was, I was just, just new to high school, freshman year. And I had one of those televisions that you would, uh, you could set your alarm on it and it would turn on in the morning, you know, whatever time you set it for, it would turn on, whatever channel you wanted on. And so that's how I would wake up, you know? So I'd always set my alarm at six thirty, and, you know, it would turn on. We, and we had a, a basic cable deal. So in that, that deal, it, they played music and showed all the, the ads for the, the town, like whatever job openings there are and stuff. Well, you know, I would put it on that channel because the music, so, uh, one morning, I, I can't tell you exactly what day of the week, but I know it's one of the morning, my TV goes off. And, the, of course, I wake up to the music, and as I open my eyes, I'm watching this Western-style gentleman walk into my room. You know, he had a, one of those uh, mustaches that they curl at the tip, you know? And... Uh, like a plaid shirt or, you know, the Western button long sleeve shirts, you know, real nice dress, but it looked more from the older time. And uh, he walked into the room and he turned, I watched him, you know, push the button and turned off the TV. And while he did that, he turned to me and smiled and he turned away. And when this happened, I was like frozen but I was able to wipe my eyes, you know, like, like, what did I just see? You know, like what's going on. So, and really, and just because I didn't recognize this man, I didn't know who this man was, where he came from or anything like that. So I'm wiping my eyes and I'm like starting to freak out a little bit. But when I open them, I'm watching him leave the room. Well, he never opened the door to leave my room. He walked straight through. So when that happened, I jumped up and I walked straight out, you know, opened the door, you know, expecting to catch this man, you know, exiting my house or something. And instead I find my stepdad and my mom, you know, sitting at the table drinking coffee. And they never, they never saw anybody leave my room. They never experienced anything going on. They figured that I was the one who woke up and turned off the TV. You know, so they were, you know, they had no idea what what I saw or what I experienced at that moment, you know. So it when that happened, it, would, it threw me off guard. And, you know, I always wondered after that who that was or, you know, if it was a distant relative or what, you know, because it was just one of those things I, I never, never thought to look into it or check or anything like that, you know, just. It scared me in a way, but I never got that. I never got that feeling that it was there to hurt me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I can understand that, especially when I mean the thing smiled at you. So I mean, if you're feeling like you don't get a feeling of it wants to hurt you and it's smiling at you, all right, cool. I mean, when you first said that though, that it smiled at you, I'm like, yo, that sounds creepy. You know, because I've heard I've heard um, stories of people. For instance, there's an episode that I did. This guy got lost in the Smoky Mountains, and he describes what happened to him the night that he got lost in the Smoky Mountains. And he saw a uh, a creature. Let's put it that way. He really didn't want to say it was Dogman. He really didn't want to say it was Bigfoot, but he was kind of, 
saying it was either Bigfoot or Dogman but without saying it. He yeah. describes this thing looking at him, and it smiled at him. And the smile, he said, was very unnatural. The smile went from ear to ear. And to me, that sounds like something that's probably not uh, very it's gonna hurt unnatural. You. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like it's probably some kind of... Uh, for me, it sounds demonic. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not a natural thing for an animal to smile at you and for the smile to go from ear to ear. Maybe it was a dog man that had, had a uh, a long snout, and so when it smiled, it looked like it went from ear to ear. I don't know. I don't remember the episode very well, to be honest with you. Uh, but whenever I hear somebody say that an entity smiled at them, uh, to me, it sounds pretty creepy, but apparently that wasn't the case for you. Yeah. Like, like I said, I, I didn't get no no fear from it you know but it did scare me in a way because it was like okay who's this man in my room you know like it so it it gets to that you know more of that freaky stage than anything else you know but i could imagine you know seeing a dog man or something like that man that that will scare the crap out of me (laughs) oh yeah of course i mean I I would be scared if I saw a dog, man. I'd be scared if I saw a Bigfoot probably at this point. But oh yeah, I, I've heard too many stories, bro. I I, <laughs> I know I, I don't. I, I've been listening to to your, yours and Wes's show probably from day one. Well, I got your show off of Wes's show, but I caught up from yours. I've I like like I told you in our email. I, I'm a truck driver, so I you know the whole time I'm driving it either yours, Wes's, or some other conspiracy show that's going on. And, you know, I've, I have those in my, my ears all day, every day. <laughs> so it is one of those, you know, weird phenomenon that going on. Yeah. I, I was, I was literally sitting at my house one morning before I had to go into work. I, I had a later start back in the day. I would start at nine o'clock in the morning and I'm watching monster quest on TV. And I, I loved that show. I always loved that show. And I, I was really just in that mindset of, you know, hey, you know, I really would like to watch this, finish this episode, but I can't. I got to go to work. And it just hit me. I was like, I wonder if there's any kind of Bigfoot talk radio or something like that. I didn't even know what a podcast was. And I just Googled it and Sasquatch Chronicles came up and I was like, I, I took, I listened for like five minutes. I was like, yo, this sounds awesome. And I was hooked. I, I ran through all his episodes until I caught up and stuff. And obviously now him and I are friends and things like that. But yeah, man, I get it. Driving truck, listen to podcasts, listen to what you want. I mean, yeah. that's why it, I, I, th- I think podcasting is the future of radio because, you know, oh, it's yeah. just, it's just better. It's just better. Yeah. I, I honestly, I, I haven't heard a new song in like about two and a half years to tell you the truth. Yep. <laughs> my, my, my kids, they come and they're playing these songs. I'm just like, what is that? <laughs> so it's it's one of those things, man. But like I said, I pretty much the same way. I got into podcasting about that same about that same way. Just watching, you know, at that time, Sasquatch Chron, uh, the Finding Bigfoot stuff was on on TV, and you know all that other stuff. And then when I had my other encounter with the the UFO and stuff, that just really just opened my mind to everything that could be out there, you know. Yeah. Well, why don't you walk us into that? What happened with the UFO encounter? Well, th- this one dates back to 2010, my first encounter. And um, I'm not sure you're too familiar with oil field uh, work and stuff like that, but we do a lot of uh, like pelletized material, you know, like just your, your sack material for the rigs, you know, so they can make their, their liquids or whatever. And Okay. Well, I I had a buddy drop a pallet on a on the ranch road down in Laredo, Texas, which is about a two minute drive to the border. <laughs> well, and that that uh that ranch road it, it takes you to the pretty much to the backside of Laredo, Texas, and it it borders the 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 Rio Grande River that pretty much cuts Texas off with, with Mexico. So um, we're driving down that road to go pick up that pallet that he dropped. And we get about two miles down the, the ranch road whenever, you know, down there, you know, we're, we're in 
of very brushy, brushy land. We have mesquite trees everywhere, all that stuff. So it gets pretty dark out there in the ranches, you know. And just in the middle of nowhere, about, I would say about 200, 300 yards in front of us, a, a bright light, you know, turns on. But it's not like a, a bright light that it shows a beam or, or you know, it got some big old ball of light around it. It's just a light, you know, that just just out of nowhere in the middle of the sky, you know. So we're watching as we're driving down the road. And well, we started noticing it when it the light would it would like dim out, and in the middle of where that light was, you could see two other little lights like spinning counterclockwise. And so you know we're like, oh wow, that's crazy, you know. So we pulled over, got off our pickup truck, you know, and and so you know, see if we could hear a sound or a helicopter, you know, like. That's what we're thinking it was, a helicopter, because we have border patrols and immigration officers and all that all around us. So, you know, we're figuring, you know, they're using some kind of government issue, you know, drone or something. But at that time, drones weren't really too famous just yet, you know. So we're, we're, we're watching this, and probably about the third time that it turns off and, you know, does that spinning deal it splits into two and right when it splits into two, that light turns back on. And so it's two bright lights. And then those two bright lights, they split into four. And then they make like a, like a straight line. And then one, it like peaks up towards the top and it makes like a triangle. Right. So, so now we're watching a triangle figure with four different lights. And, they're simultaneously, like all different times, just their their lights turning off, and each one of them have that little those two little circle lights spinning in the middle. And so, you know, by this time they're a little closer to us. They're, I would say, about 150 yards from us. You know, about give it guess about 300 meters or so up in the air. You know, so. If it was anything, we could hear it, you know? We never got a humming sound or anything. So we're like, well, shoot, let's take pictures with our phones, you know? We had the, the Razor phones back then. So, you know, we all put out our Razor phones, and they were dead, like completely dead. No no battery life on them, no nothing. So, you know, we were, we were like, okay, that's weird, you know? And then those lights, they end up making a diamond shape. Like in from the triangle, it went into a diamond shape. So now you got one in four corners, and it they start like hovering in like a circle kind of deal, and then they all just make a one more line again, and and by this process it's already about five ten minutes into it, and then they all just come back together into one, and it, with one bright light it just zooms off and you can like it just leaves a, like a telling of light just enough so you could see which direction it went and you couldn't see it no more and that that was <laughs> that was really the eye opener uh open-minded situation that happened yeah for sure so i mean you reach in your pockets and you pull out your razor cell phones i haven't heard somebody say that in a while and uh, <laughs> all of them were dead is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Every one of our phones, were, one, of, one of the guys that was with me, he had a, it, and mind you, multiple eyewitnesses. There was three of us that witnessed this at the same time. So we weren't like, you know, losing our mind or anything. You know, still to this day, we, like, if we see each other, we'll bring that up, you know, and like, oh man, that's freaky, you know? And, but, one of my buddies, he had one of those old school peanut phones, the Nokia, little single, little tiny phones, the indestructible ones. Yeah. <laughs> and, the uh, bricks. yeah, the bricks. And, and he had one of those phones. And like, like I said, no, nothing, like none of our phones had battery, you know, and we, we just thought that was like way out of the ordinary, you know, and, of course, mind you, besides seeing the lights in the in the sky, you know, but 
you know, it had no sounds, no, like, you know, it didn't make us feel sick or anything like that. It was just weird, weird lights that popped up in our sky, you know, and, and in fact, if, if you could go and look on YouTube, Laredo, Texas, UFO sightings, you, there's one video in there that it shows almost the same thing, except that are doing a, a different, uh, like formations and stuff like that. Yeah, that's interesting, man. I mean, with with this sighting that you had, did you ever feel like at any point that those lights were aware of you at all? I I really didn't. Uh, to, to tell you the truth, not not these ones at least. Um, like I uh, I've mentioned, I've I've had a few others, but these ones at that moment, I didn't feel it. You know, uh, it just like I said, way out of the ordinary to. You know, for something like that to be in the middle of the ranch that we were driving down, especially where a rig that, you know, so it, it, uh, it was kind of, it was more of a scary situation, I guess, now that we, I think about it because, you know, we had no, no cell phones, no nothing now. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, I guess, um, I, I don't know. I mean, if this thing was, or things, I guess, were in the sky and your cell phones went dead, if it had anything to do with what was in the sky, I guess maybe it was aware that you were there or it's just a natural effect that it has on electronics. Did you have any experiences with the cars or anything that would be uh, a sign that it was affecting that? Uh, well, the the pickup truck that we were in, that truck, we, we actually turned it off when I would be, we pulled over because uh i guess i i think it was more just so we could see if we hear sound you know we never left the lights on or anything like that we just shut everything down at that moment you know because you know we're, we're trying to we're trying to hear sound and and see you know if it was a helicopter or what it was because like like i said when, when they split apart and then they all came back together you know, there's no like crazy sounds or you know humming sounds. You know, like you know, we never got that. So, you know, as far as it affecting the vehicle and stuff, we never, never really got to see if that happened at that moment because we had just shut it down. You know. Yeah, I mean, I just find it interesting and fascinating that uh, you did have the electrical difficulty with your phones. And I mean, where do we hear that? We hear that with Bigfoot sightings. We hear that with Dogman sightings that, you know, all of a sudden your cell phone or whatever electronics you had, all of a sudden they stop working. And it's like, you know, what's going on here? I mean, this is clearly not something that's just totally natural because, uh, I mean, I've never heard of an animal uh, being able to affect the electronics that you're holding or, you know, somebody's pickup truck driving by affecting your your uh, <laughs> your cell phone battery. You know, it's there's definitely yeah. something going on here. Uh, now you said that you, that was the first experience. Did you have any more UFO encounters after that? Uh, yeah. Um, pretty much yearly since then around the same time of year, which most of the time it's around the March area, you know, of the year. And i like, I, I work this, this side of Texas a lot because, you know, I'm working the oil field with the truck driving and, you know, so we do a lot of a lot of work over here and in, in, on this side of Texas. You know, so um, pretty much like I said, every year after that, except for you know probably like two or three years in between that you know I wasn't in this area. You know, but um, the following year, I got in with a, a another company, and I was down in uh, Carrizo Springs which is, you know, it's about two hours from Laredo, Texas, you know, driving one way. And we were deep into a ranch, you know, give or guess about 30 miles in. And we got turned around from the, the oil field location because they had problems. So this time it was about 20 truck drivers that were all coming out at the same time. And so everybody, you know, we started seeing, of course, these weird lights in the sky. So everybody got on the CB radio, you know, and just communicating with everybody, letting everybody know. So 
we all decide to stop. So, like I said, it's about 20 foot drivers just all behind each other, you know. And we all got down, big old huddled into a big old group. And we're watching these lights, you know, and they're they're like playing tag, but it wasn't just like a handful of lights. It was like a hundred. Like, it just seemed like if all the stars were just dancing, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was, uh, I don't know how to explain it. This, this one was the most weirder one because, like I said, it was just so many. And it just seemed like they were dancing, like they were just zooming back and forth and up and down and side to side. And and one, one of the gentlemen that, that I was working with, he actually caught it on video camera. And, you know, he, he recorded these lights, you know, dancing. Are those lights on YouTube, do you know? I I really don't know if he ever put them on, but um, that I I need to get a hold of him and see if, see if he did put them on. I I know for a fact though that he did record them because a few days later we watched them on that camera again, and you know just still flabbergasted by what we saw that night. You know. Yeah, I mean, so these lights that you saw in the sky. I mean, if you had to estimate, how many were you looking at? I, like I I said, approximately. Anywhere between sixty to a hundred, you know. So, like I said, it was not a handful of lights. Like it looked like the stars were literally dancing. So, you know, of course, you know, you look up at the the sky, you know, at nighttime, you know, you you see a thousand stars, you know. <laughs> so, like, yeah. especially in one spot. So, if you could imagine just turning your head while you're looking in, at the sky. And watching these things just bounce around all over the place, it it's uh, it's kind of terrifying, you know. Like, and, oh, for sure, yeah. And what, like after that, I I kind of got out of the oil field for a little bit because of that reason, especially because I was like I was doing a lot of work in that area, and uh, it, it it terrified me a little bit, but it was more just like I said, my 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 mind was already open to everything that every possibility, you know, of uh, alien abductions and, and, you know, like the way we were talking about earlier, Bigfoots and dog men and, you know, the lizard people and stuff like that. So like, you know, my mind is just baffled by all these crypt, cryptic things and, and phenomena that we have no idea about, you know, and, everybody's still trying to find answers to, to it. So when all this was going on, it was just like, it, it all, like, it felt like it was fried my mind, you know, like I had to, I had to give myself a break, you know? And so mm -hmm. I, I got out of the oil field for about another year. And then leading into that following year, after that, that break, um, I've, I've, Working uh, the the Carrizo, the Carrizo Springs area again, and I of course I, I went back to it because you know I, I needed the money, young family, young man, you know, trying to just trying to strive to make work for his family, and uh, well, this time around my buddy broke down, and so. Of course, you know, just bending in my hand, trying to help him fix his lights and get his trailer brakes going on his truck. And these uh, seven lights just appeared in a in a like lateral form, like like in a straight line, pretty much, just one light after another. And they look like street lights, you know, just without a without the glow or the beam, but just bright, pretty much almost like right above us, just a little, you know, about 50 yards, I would say 50 yards to a hundred yards away. But it felt like they were right on top of us. And these ones we heard humming, like a, like, a, you know, like a weird, I guess how you would picture like a, a siphon motor, you know, like something like, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just seven likes. You know, and they they were like uh, like an orange street light color, and 
they they shifted like they went from like a straight line like and then they went upward like a vertical you know from horizontal to vertical you know like just just all in the straight simultaneous line and then they all turned off one by one and then they they took off like they disappeared and after that i told my buddy i was like i'm sorry bro i love you but peace (laughs) deuces yeah man that's crazy stuff man i mean the 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 second encounter you just shared with us i mean dude like like you said that you were that scared you and i mean i can't imagine because if i saw 60 to 100 lights doing their own independent thing in the sky uh i would think that i'm getting invaded by something is that how you felt yeah um and and to to pretty much help some that that part of the story up. Um, a lot, back in that time, I, I would say, what, like 2011. So somewhere in between 2009 to 2011, they made a movie about this guy getting abducted by aliens. And he was like trying to tell the psychiatrist, like, hey, look, like this happened. And they put him through hypnotism and everything like that. Well, by the end of it, you know, he ends up killing his family and killing himself. I'm, I'm not sure. I think it was like case 39 or case 29 or case something. I, I think that's what the movie was called. But, uh, well, I had just seen that movie when that, like I went out to that job. So whenever, whenever I went out to that, that job after watching that movie, like all this, all that started happening, you know, and it, it, it threw me off, you know, and, at this time, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I guess, uh, too strong in my faith at that time, you know, like, so it, it, uh, like I, I, I did the, the downward spiral for a little bit, you know, so it, it really started to rock everything, you know, like I said, it, it, it scared me to a point where I actually had to pack myself out of everything and, and regroup in a way. Yeah. No, I can imagine. I mean, uh, dealing with this kind of stuff, everybody reacts to it a little differently. And, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, because if you, if you don't think about this stuff a whole lot, like, obviously I think about this stuff. And now, I mean, I think about UFOs more than I ever did because of the show. And, but if you're somebody that doesn't really think about this stuff on a regular basis and you have these experiences, it can throw your life into a whirlwind. Like you, you, like all of a sudden, everything that you thought you knew is no longer uh, viable in your mind. You're like, because I saw this in the sky and you don't know how to make it. Is it government? Is it extraterrestrial? Is it uh, swamp gas? You know, you don't know what it is, but you know what you saw and you're scared to tell people because you don't want to sound like a crazy guy. And so you yeah. just keep it to yourself <laughs> and you don't have an outlet, hence the confessionals. So I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. We're here, we're here to learn from everybody else's experiences. Yeah, and and pr- pretty much um, what what led me really into into going into the cryptids and you know the extraterrestrial and you know all the extra phenomenon stuff you know is just that like I said wh- whenever I got that scare like it, I had to reopen my faith you know I had to I had to bring myself closer to God again you know. And so I I went through like a a big devotional kind of thing that I had like you know I was, I had to go and redo a lot of things that was going on in my life at that time you know so I went from dropping the the circular music to you know listening to to my Christian music again you know to going and dropping you know the cussing and and speaking the right way again you know and you know, just just little things at a time, you know. But I had to, I had to fix myself, you know, and and get, you know, ask for help from God, you know, because, like I said, it it, it made me test a lot of my faith at that moment. So, you know, and I like I said, I don't know if it was just because the movie that I saw before that or after what the deal was, but it it got it got to the point where I got comfortable. You know, and now 
I wanted to explore what other things were out there. So, you know, I started, I started digging into the internet, you know, just everything you could find on UFOs, everything you could find on Dogman, everything you could find on Bigfoot, you know, the, like down here, we have a, the fourth floor, the Chupacabra, which is, it's oh, like yeah. a, you know, it's like a, a dog man itself, but like just a dog, you know, <laughs> just stay small, <laughs> like a vampire dog or something. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. it, it, uh, like that, that was the hard thing down here, you know, and, uh, it, it uh, you know, it, it, it made you start thinking about all these cryptids and, the the fort doors and the boogeyman and stuff like that you know like pe- what people always blow off and make jokes out of and all that stuff it makes made you think about it you know yeah no i i get it man and the, and the whole uh chupacabra thing uh, i've heard people try to have uh possible explanations for it as it, you know it's a mangy dog i mean have you ever heard that explanation for that oh yeah um a, a, a lot of times that that's what the the description is their their hind legs are smaller than the front legs, but there's different breeds of dogs that have that in fact uh, i i was, i want to say about a year ago down down here uh in south texas they they came uh this this gentleman claimed that he caught one in a trap and it it's it's a weird looking dog that he caught but you know, to say it was a chupacabra, it's a whole other thing, you know? So, <laughs> but, but I guess it, that's every skeptic for you <laughs> because, you know, yeah. we could bring we could bring a Bigfoot to somebody and they'll be like, oh, no, that's just somebody dressed up, you know? Like, so I guess, I guess, I guess that's how it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what to make of the chupacabra. I, I know I had somebody who wanted to come on the show and share their experience with it, and they would seem to be pretty certain this is something not normal. And uh, so she was nervous about coming on the show. She's like, I don't feel comfortable with this. I said, well, you know, you don't have to. I'm not going to make you do it. But I told her, I said, a lot of people look at the Chupacabra as something that's, uh, you know, actually more normal than any other cryptid. But I guess she was just really afraid of the backlash and things like that. And she didn't come on. Maybe one of these days she will and stuff. Maybe maybe she's listening to this right now and she's, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll finally come on, you know, a year and yeah. a half later, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, well, it, it's just, you know, as we grow up, like, like, it's, especially like, like I was saying, like my, my grandma's Hispanic, you know, and just all the, the, the little stories she would tell you about, about the Chupacabra and, and, you know, things like that. It was just, it was one of those things that you, uh, you know, you just never want to dig into it or, or like the witches, you know, like down here we call them brujas, you know? which is just a witch, you know, but there, there would always be like, don't go to past this lady's house because the fruit has her or there, you know, like, or whatever, you know, so, you know, you, you listen, you, you never went because you never wanted to experience anything past that, you know? Yeah, I totally get it, man. Especially as a kid. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure, for sure. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate you coming on tonight and sharing some of these stories that you've experienced. Uh, you know, if you had to sum it up, man, as far as the ghostly encounters go and stuff, I mean, I know, you know, you referenced it several times throughout the show that you're a Christian. Uh, how do you reconcile your experiences with your, your faith? Is it something that, like, you, you believe that ghosts are real because you've seen them? Or do you believe that all ghosts are demonic entities? How do you view these things? There is uh, no right I, or wrong answer to this. I, I honestly believe that they're... They're, uh, um, how do you say it? I, I don't think they're bad, you know, not typically all of them, you know, like I do believe in the demonic entities and stuff like that. But as far as ghosts, I think they're just stuck in a, you know, stuck in a time loop, you know, especially if they die suddenly or, you know, anything like that, you know, because, you know, we, we all, we've all heard the stories, you know, or read the books that, you know, the people die and they see the light, you know, stuff like that. And they come back and they, they preach about it or they tell people about it. And I necessarily don't think it's always a bad thing, but 
I think it's a way for us, you know, to try helping them find their way. In a way. You know what I mean? No, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Uh, there's a lot of people without opinion. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think that, that they're typically, you know, demon possessed or anything like that. Like, you know, of course, you know, everybody will be able to tell, you know, the, the, uh, I think the bad ones from the good ones, you know, like, or not the good ones typically, you know, but just the bad ones in general, you know, the, because the, they're more of the, like, I don't know how to explain it, man. That's fine, man. That's fine. Well, listen, man, Rusty, I really appreciate coming on and sharing your stories, man. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, go ahead and share this show around social media. All you got to do is take the link of the show that you're listening to right now and share it around on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I don't care where you share it. Just go ahead and share the show, and I would greatly appreciate that. Hey, thanks for watching The Confessionals on YouTube. If you like what you heard, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, and hit the like button. That would be a great help to me. And if you want more of The Confessionals on a weekly basis, every Thursday I come out with a special show just for members on my website. So if you want to check that out, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. And every Thursday, you'll get a new show, and you can binge on previous shows, which there's almost a 100 of them. So if you love the show, go ahead and check it out. But thank you very much for being here on YouTube and checking out the channel.